All right. Good evening, everybody. I would like to call to order the Concord Carlisle School Committee. And I'd like to call to order the Concord School Committee. It's good to see so many people here in the audience. And now that we're live, I just want to welcome Sharon Witt with us, who's a new regional member. And Court Booth is not joining us tonight because he had a death in the family. So we're down one, unfortunately. So our condolences to Court. And I think we're all set. We don't have to no, roll call. Uh, do we do a roll call? We're we don't have here. to do roll call. We're all, we're all here. We're all present. We're getting yeah. used to being in person. Okay. Um, so before we start, just because we're starting new, I, like I said, I'm the chair of the region and Alexa is the chair of Concord Public Schools, so things might look a little bit different. Our agenda tonight has a lot of K-12 to things on it, so Alexa and I will kind of be taking turns back and forth on certain parts of the meeting. And certainly if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to stop us. Thanks. All right. Um, again, thank you to everyone for coming. Thanks to those in the audience and thanks to those um, on Zoom. Before we move to our regular business, we're actually going to share with you all a statement from the school committee that the seven of us wrote together. Um, you've all been incredibly engaged with us by email or attending our meetings, and we know that you guys are all looking for a response um, from us about our situation with our hostile workplace environment complaint. So with a newly seated committee, we thought this was the right time to do that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy to read our prepared statement. Thank you. As chairs of the committee, we have a statement to read on behalf of the committee to the Concord, Carlisle and Boston communities. We value the superintendent and her many contributions to the district, our students and staff. We recognize that there is a high level of turmoil in our community at this time, and we are committed to doing the work to chart a more collaborative path forward. Since March, the committee has engaged with the public education and government's expert to serve as a neutral to help resolve areas of concern and improve internal communication, including leading the, commu the committee and superintendent through mediation. Last week, we welcomed a new member from Carlisle and we restructured our le leadership team. And earlier this week, we met as a new committee with Dr. Hunter to begin to establish communication protocols and move forward together. We hope you will continue to stay engaged. Democracy works best when citizens are informed and involved. At the same time, we hope you will give us the time to do the work we need to do. We care deeply about our community and we are confident that each of us will continue to serve with honor, integrity, trust, and professionalism that you expect of us. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn over to Lori to give us a statement of her own. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you to the whole committee. Initially with great distress, I found myself at the center of conflict and attention. Ultimately, however, the outpouring of support validated the collective work accomplished in our schools, especially over the past 26 months. For that, I'm very grateful. In March, the issues I raised were meant to focus on resolution with the committee members to become the high functioning team this community expects. I appreciate the committee's time in discussing the, discussing the issues since then. There is much work that has yet to be done. We often talk of intent and impact in our DEI work. Intentional or not, the impact of the committee dynamic for the past two years has been frustrating at best and deeply painful at worst. Genuine efforts to acknowledge my perspective, listen to my concerns, and view my discontent as fact rather than rumor or misunderstandings will be critical to our success. I share the same hope as the committee that we can rebuild trust, support one another, and find the collaborative course forward as described by the chairs. Thank you. All right, so before we move into our business of appointing committee representatives, I thought it would be helpful for people in the public and for some of our new members to just sort of review how we do this process. Um, so our first step is that we send out to all of the members on our committee, all the subcommittees and organizations with which we liaise so that each committee member has a full understanding of the charge of that subcommittee or organization, what the time commitment is so that they can make an informed decision about whether or not that committee will um, suit them. Then after that, we get input from all of our committee members about the different groups and committees that they'd like to serve on. From there, the work becomes ensuring that we have 
a really good, strong representative balance of all of our committee members. Um, we don't want any one committee member to have too much influence or too much, um, uh, you know, being the sort of the face of the committee. So we did seek to achieve balance. I think um, that is by design um, here and you'll see that reflected in our slate. And finally, we wanted to ensure balance of experienced members who've maybe done some of this work before um, so that the business of the committee can continue to run smoothly with their guidance. Um, but then it was also important for us to elevate uh, newer voices to the committee to, um, build our proverbial leadership bench, if you will. Um, and this, when we bring up our slate, it does um, reflect what each sort of um, member desired in terms of what they were willing to take on. So I think that's important to recognize as well. Um, and before we put the slate up, um, before I turn this over to Tracy, I'll, you'll notice that we have two new positions um, on our slate. We, um, it's very clear to probably everybody that we have been really prioritizing our DEI work this year, this past year. Um, we're all expecting that that will continue to be a major priority of the committee's work going forward. So to that end, we established a liaison position to the Concord DEI Commission so that um, we know their work when it intersects with us, we're sort of informed as to what they're doing and that um, person will report back to the committee. And then we also added two representatives to Andrew Namichi's DEI strategic steering committee. Um, and I will let Tracy talk about sort of why we did that and um, move forward. Okay. So as most of you know, I chaired our DEI subcommittee for the school committee this year. We had did some great work all year. Um, Kristen was part of that. Dr. Hunter was part of that. Andrew was part of that. And I, we really were, were trying to figure things out along the way as we went, as Andrew has a new position here. So what we, I, Alexa, um, Dr. Hunter, Andrew, and I met last week, and we kind of talked about morphing our DEI subcommittee into the DEI strategic steering committee because then it becomes more, we're more part of the work as we're starting into it rather than looking over it. So we really wanted to collaborate with the entire committee and do some of that work. So Sharon and I went to that meeting last week, and she'll give the update later. And it was great to, you know, work in teams to do that. So we felt as though that's part of the work that we're going to continue in the future, which is why we're kind of morphing our DEI subcommittee into that work. Now, we do need to take a vote on that at the end of the um, meeting, but we will have some discussion about that. But that's just the background on there. And then in terms of our committee assignments, I'm just going to read where we have everyone placed right now. That. And everybody's received this document on our committee. We've had good discussions with everybody yep. so far. Yep. So, okay. Adults and community ed, we have Sarah Wilson. Um, the Carlisle Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen is Sarah Wilson. Concord Finance Committee, Cynthia Rainey and Alexa Anderson. Concord Select Board, Court Booth. Concord DEI Commission, uh, Cynthia Rainey. CAAB. Uh, the Climate Action Advisory Board, sorry, is also Cynthia Rainey, Peg Access, Cynthia Rainey, Concord Financial Audit Advisory is Court Booth, the Policy Subcommittee, Carrie Rankin, Tracy Murano, Alexa Anderson, uh, CPAC will be Alexa Anderson and Sarah Wilson, C CMS Building Committee will be Alexa Anderson and Court Booth, but we have to vote on that after because um, that is a school committee appointment. The calendar committee will be Alexa Anderson, sustainability committee, Cynthia Rainey, the DEI strategic steering committee is Sharon Witt and Tracy Murano, and the superintendent's METCO advisory council will be Carrie Rankin and Tracy Murano. Okay. Any so, questions on that before we move on? Yeah, Comments? Yeah. And again, the... Um, the slate will be moved as a consent agenda like we did last year, um, it, with the exception of the building committee, which will be voted on after because that needs a separate motion. Yes, Cynthia. So first of all, uh, Madam Chairs, if I may, we will need to pull out the Concord vote to separate vote, Concord committees. We didn't do that last year. Well, we should have. Okay. Um, um, we should vote independently for those that are appointments. 
so we're clear with the select board, like for instance, the PEG Access Advisory Committee will need to be nominated and appointed by the select board because it's an actual member of the PEG Access Committee. Sure, I, I thought we appoint them and then that happens after. Yes, but I'm saying yeah. we need to say here was the vote sure. to the select board so it's all clear. Okay, yeah. Yeah. we didn't do that last so, time, I apologize. Well, it was a reappointment, I think. Court was- I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, so we didn't do it for any of them yeah, yeah. except so, the building. So if they're reappointments like the building committee, we don't need to do anything because the appointment is for the term of the project. And we can ask Mr. Johnson if you'd like to him to okay. in on that. Because those terms are for the term of the project. It's not a three-year term or one-year term or annual term. So, um, so we can- Unless so, the membership changes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want us to split that tonight or can we just vote the slate? No, we should split it tonight unless you don't. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yes, hold up can, these appointments. That's all. That's fine. Right. You know, sure, we don't want to do, do that. Yeah. And that, that, that's all yeah. the comments I have. And Sarah, do you have something? I have a question about the I, I, <clears throat> the policy subcommittee has three members of the Concord. Sorry, um, can you use the microphone? Oh, sorry, sorry, the um, <laughs> policy subcommittee has three members of the Concord um, school committee. But I thought a subcommittee couldn't have a quorum of a committee. Like a subcommittee can't have can't a be a quorum of the Concord Public. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But are we a quorum of the region? We're not a quorum of the region. No. Just, Isn't no. it a regional committee? No, but you but cannot have a quorum, a quorum of the Concord School Committee on any committee. Okay, so we yeah. can we can reconsider that. <clears throat> yeah. So why don't we pull that one out for yeah, now? Yeah, we can pull that out and talk about it yeah. for next week. We'll talk about it for next time. Yeah, because yeah. we don't have any um, policy subcommittees coming mm -hmm. up for yeah, the rest fine. of the year, so yeah. we'll just do that at our next one. Okay, That's perfect. Yep. So do you want to just go one by one on this? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So you could do the slate as a, the region as a slate. So you want to just do that maybe? Yeah. Okay, we can do the region as a slate and then the Concord appointments as a slate. Okay, so do you have the, do you have the list of the Concord appointments in the region? Um, I do. Do you want to just do that? Sure. Because I know you have that. Um, okay, so on a slate, we will move to approve as discussed all appointments for the region committee, which include the appointment of Sarah Wilson to adult and community education, Sarah Wilson to the Carlisle Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee Observer, um, to the uh, we will appoint Alexa Anderson and Sarah Wilson to the CPAC. We will appoint Alexa Anderson to the Calendar Committee. We'll appoint Cynthia Rainey to the Sustainability Committee. We'll appoint uh, Sharon Witt and Tracy Morano to the DEI Strategic Steering Committee. And finally, Carrie Rankin and Tracy Morano to the Superintendent's METCO Advisory. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So Second. Moved. Okay. Second. All in favor. I guess we raise our hands here. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. And moving on to the Concord slate, um, we are going to need a motion to approve. Cynthia Rainey is appointed and Alexa Anderson to the Concord Finance Committee. Court Booth to the Concord Select Board. Cynthia Rainey to the Concord DEI Commission. Cynthia Rainey to the Climate Action Advisory Board. Cynthia Rainey to the PEG Access Advisory Committee. Court Booth to the Concord Financial Audit Advisory. Uh, Alexa Anderson and Court, uh, that needs a separate one. Well, Alexa Anderson and Court Booth to the CMS Building Committee. And that's it. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Oh, second. Sorry. All, all in right. Favor. All in favor on Concord. Aye. Aye. Um, and we will table our policy. Great. Thank you. Okay, well, that was the uh, business portion. No, just kidding. We're on to the student update. So I think that Harry and Darcy are with us. Hello. Um, Hello. And I'm not sure if Zaria is with us. Zaria. Yeah, yeah. I We were looking for the participants. I'm not sure that she's here. That's partially our fault. I sent her a reminder this morning, but that might have okay. been a little bit late. I'm sure I can send her. I can reach out to her again, and I'm sure we can get her for the next one. Um <laughs> But we have a pretty quick update. I can start. The first stuff is just like a little bit negative. Um, I 
obviously there's not like a solution to any of this. But I think it's something that is affecting a lot of the schools. So it's helpful to just sort of keep in mind in the future. But like there is, as we mentioned during the last meeting, a lot of anxiety surrounding COVID-19 with cases reaching levels that are like, I think pretty high this year, especially. And I feel like a lot of students feel they could be a little bit more supported and accommodated with the absences because it sort of feels like you're out for the five days and then you're kind of just left scrambling to get caught up. And I think also this sort of tends to happen every spring, but I feel like a lot of people are kind of very much in that like final push and struggling to just like, you know, I would say stay as motivated and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think there've also been a lot of worries about finals, just like, especially with COVID like we've been talking about. And I think to me, at least that feels very similar to the situation we had with midterms. Yeah. And last year as well. Yeah. Where I think people were a little bit worried with everyone absent right before and stuff like that. And then I don't know, moving on to slightly more positive things. Yeah. Yeah. um, Just to briefly touch on that. So um, I personally was out with COVID last week um, and my teachers have been really accommodating, but it is um, very difficult to be out for over a week um, with like our uh, academic workload. Um, and it definitely can feel at times like it's a lot of work, um, with COVID, especially when you're sick, but my teachers were very helpful. Um, but I think a lot of students are feeling kind of increased anxiety about being out, especially right before final season. And I know like personally out of my six teachers, um, three are out with COVID. So it is a bit difficult at the end of the year, but obviously that's not, um, the most preventable thing. And then I know a lot of sports have been impacted. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do track and many people were out with COVID during um, a really important meet last week um, and similar sports situations as well. Um, But on a a slightly more positive note, (laughs) um, prom took place over the weekend um, and a lot of juniors and seniors had a great time. Um, Not to go back to another negative thing, but (laughs) 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 um, people who got COVID, unfortunately, but I I think that was a bit to be expected. Um, But I think... (laughs) Harry can probably attest to this as well. Um, when you're walking around the school, there's definitely, it feels like a lot less people. Oh, it does. I, Darcy and I were making a presentation <laughs> in the library today and we were just yeah. noticing it's been a little bit quieter the past couple oh, of days. Oh, very much more. And I think also, but there are a lot more students being very, very like careful surrounding the pandemic. Um, so there's been a lot more students wearing masks to school, um, wearing masks as they were talking about COVID and kind of making sure they're being safe. Um, and then another exciting thing that's happening is that the pop up thrift store that Senate runs is taking place this Friday. Um, and it's required a lot of work behind the scenes. So we um, we work with the drop off swap off every year to collect used and old clothes um, that people would want to buy and would want to wear. And we make a thrift store um, with them. And it's always been a, a really successful yeah. event. Everything's sold for like a really reasonable price, you know, like one or $2 or something. And then all the profits that we make are donated to second chance clothing. Mm-hmm. And then anything that we don't sell ends up getting donated. I think I'm not sure of the exact charity. It's a, it might a be women's good. shelter, I want yeah. to say. So it all gets used. It all goes to a good cause. And the town loves it because it gets mm-hmm. students out in the community and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then do you want to take this last thing? Yeah, sure. Um, and then just also about the pop-up thrift store. Last year, we raised over $1,000, which is uh, a, a great amount of money to donate um, to a charity of our choice. And a lot of students enjoyed it. So we're looking mm-hmm. forward to running it this year. Um, and then also um, elections are currently being held for student Senate and student government. Um, and their voting forms just went out today at around uh, just at the end of the school day. Mm-hmm. And it caused a lot of excitement among students. And there's many, many new faces running. Which is um, always good to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. A lot of freshmen too, which is exciting. Um, so that's currently what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Like I was saying in the beginning, it can feel a little bit negative and there's obviously no solution to it. We're not operating like perfect times, but I yeah. just think some important things to keep in mind. So yeah. That's great. I love your updates in this well, format because you're, they're very robust <laughs> and you have the presentation portion and we can be negative. It's totally fine. <laughs> I had COVID two weeks ago. It's really a pain. Um, it definitely disrupts your life. I We have a bunch of teachers with us in the room today too, and I'm sure it disrupts their lives and their classrooms and we're just all in it together. So I, I think it's it's yeah. going to be fine. So um, I have a question about prom. Were there a lot of buses that went? Did you guys have a bunch of buses that went in? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of buses. So yeah. we had the like class government, the group that organized it, they have coach buses. And then a lot of people, if they're going in big groups before, they'll yeah. get their own buses. They'll get like a party bus or yeah. they'll get some other form of transportation. Okay. Because this is really the first real prom that you guys have probably experienced at the high school, right? 
Um, yeah. So we, we were underclassmen. We're both sophomores. So we're, yeah. We didn't experience it, but we know a lot, obviously a lot of kids yeah. who did. Right. Well, it's been great to have you guys with us here again, and we'll definitely see you next time. And I look forward to the updates and don't worry if they're negative. It's, it's okay. We can handle it. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Anybody else have anything for them? We're good. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. On to the public comment portion of our meeting. And we're going to start with public comment in the room uh, before we do it on Zoom. And just as a reminder that this is a meeting in the public and not with the public. So the school committee will not comment uh, back on any public comments. You'll have three minutes. So if you can state your name and address, and then you're free to make your comment. So if anyone is in the room, you can step up to the microphone. Up here. Yep. Hi. Come on up. Name and address, please. I'm Cheryl Shan. I'm in the 103 Humber Street, and I also see the middle school. All right. I think you should do this for the middle school, too. There are so many extensions, lovely, involved kids in the middle school who would love to have this platform to report back on their involvement. And Involve you in their process. Thank you. Love it. Hi, this is Maggie, 95 or Missionary Road. Um, I wanted to comment on your discussion you're going to have today about macro representation on the school committee. It's a really exciting time, I think, to be part of this opportunity. As you know, there's only three other towns that are have thought about this and you kind of wonder what's taken us so long to realize that we need representation for students that are part of our community um i, I want to encourage you all in the discussions to not use the word not use the acronym dei because i think we're forgetting what each of those letters stands for so they each represent something that are important. But to just say DEI, I think, loses what we're trying to accomplish. For example, how inclusive has the process been so far in developing this policy? Have you had people sit with you in the subcommittee meetings? Have you reached out and done other things? In what ways has it been inclusive? The uh, folks in Boston are sending you emails really concise and cohesive emails with this is what's important to us. How well is the policy subcommittee and the larger group listening to those and incorporating that, that's the I. The other important piece for this discussion is the equity piece. When you're discussing the number of representatives, the first way that I thought about it was, oh yeah, well, there's a certain number of Carlisle representatives based on the population, things like that. That's what I thought too. And then I heard more of the discussion about the reason to have more than one representative from medical families at the table. It's not an equality issue, it's equity. And it's also doing our part to make sure that the voices are heard and not just doing the bare minimum. So if we have to do something that is out of the norm that hasn't been done before in other towns, I think we should take the initiative and do that. And because that is showing where, what we value which is voices at the table in the way that they want to bring them to the table and that we are going to include them and we are going to work for equity in the way that we can measure. And so people say, yes, you are reaching our goals. So thank you for this continued discussion. As I said, I'm really excited that this is happening now when we can all be part of it. And I think everybody is going to benefit if we can continue to work together. So thank you. Thank you. Did you practice that? That was like almost to the minute three minutes very well done perfect <laughs> three minutes hi um erin fife 174 hill street um the comment i'd like to make is on the uh, dissolution of the dei subcommittee um and i would encourage the committee to think about the purpose of that dei subcommittee and my um interpretation of the purpose was uh for one to sort of engage with the dei strategic planning process which is the thing that you will continue to do. And the second piece, which I think is, is even more important, is um, doing the learning that is required in order to fully engage in the DEI work. Um, and 
if you get rid of that subcommittee, how will you continue to do that education piece? How will you continue to think about what each of us individually bring to the discussions and how our perspectives are informed by our own personal experiences and how to take those unconscious biases and um, sort of recognize them and how it impacts the policy work that the school committee does. How does the intent of the policy um, change compared to the impact of the policy and really start to do that work and bringing that to the work. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Okay, I think we have Eric Moore on Zoom. So if you can turn your camera on. Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, Eric Moore, 45 Francis Street in Concord. I have one quick comment uh, about the uh, proposal uh, for the per uh, framing the participation of a METCO representative on the school committees. Uh, and it's this sentence, the METCO representative will be authorized to sit at all open sessions of the school committee. And I, I would urge us to consider that word open. I, I'd really prefer to see a strongly support the representation for METCO uh, on the school committee. I would like to see uh, our representative or representatives being able to, to participate in both open and closed sessions. Uh, I think in particular participation in closed sessions is, is this is where we're making budget decisions. Uh, and uh, as President Biden has said, I'll paraphrase, show me your budget and I'll show you your values. Uh, if our representatives are not part of all meetings, uh, I feel that the, the, the district does not receive the full benefit of their participation. So please consider uh, including our METCO representatives in all, all elements of the school committee processes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else online with a comment? Okay, seeing none. I think we're done with public comment. So thank you. We'll have public comment at the end. Also, if there's something else that you would like to make a comment about. Okay, and now we're going to go to recognitions. And before Dr. Hunter starts, I think uh, Ms. Anderson has someone she would like to recognize. I see um, our friend and former colleague, Eva Mustafi, in our audience. And I just... Uh, what? Can she oh, yes, Eva, do you want to come up? <laughs> Sit in a chair with us. <laughs> One last time. <laughs> Oh, she's turning on the bed. <laughs> um, we just wanted to recognize Eva for her tremendous um, contributions to the school committee. I personally had the privilege of working with Eva um, in a heightened capacity on both the policy subcommittee and two years. I like to call her my wingman or wing person um, as we both were liaisons to um the CPAC organization. And in particular, um, in our work together on the CPAC, I just recognize, and I think you all should know, Eva is just at her authentic core, a tireless advocate for kids, um, not only for their way they learn, but their wellness. And um, it is just, it's so organic. It's so authentic and it just radiates um, so she will be really missed. Um, and all of us, thank you for your incredible service to this committee and we will um, absolutely miss you. And I was gonna save this for my CPAC update, but um, I guess I'll say it now. Um, Eva is in the process of joining the board of the CPAC. Yeah. So, um, awesome. and I think Sarah and I have both been officially CPAC liaison. So you're stuck with me. Um, and um, I'm just so thrilled that we're going to be able to continue our work together there. And um, we're so excited for you that you found a way to stay involved because um, frankly, the district and the kids inside it need you. So thank you to Eva. And we do have a jacket for you. On its, it's way. On its way. So <laughs> you'll have to come visit when it's ready. One more time. Available for you.
And I'll say, even though I only had one year with you, Eva, I mean, really the advocacy you've done for especially dyslexic children is really critical to the work that's happening in our district. And I know that you've done a lot of great work over in Carlisle on that too. So thank you for that. And CPAC is lucky to have you. So thank you. I'll just chime in, Eva, and I worked together for a whole three years on the committee, and she's just a great partner and ally and resource, and I'll make that phone call and talk through with you what she's thinking and seeing and hearing. And um, I know I'm not your favorite superintendent because that would be Mr. <laughs> O'Shea and Carlisle, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, and we're just grateful for all the time and energy that you put in here. It really did matter. So. Thank you. The number two is a very good I understand that. I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's a very close two. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. This was uh, volunteering. It, it, it seems like the volunteering keeps uh, finding me because uh, today I had jury duty for a second day. <laughs> so I missed the CPAC coffee. <laughs> uh, but I, I look forward to uh, staying involved. Um, um, I, this has been definitely a, 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 an amazing experience because I feel like when we were going through pandemic, we were so mm -hmm. uh, we were working so closely together um, in, in Carlisle uh, and in Concord and um, bring, you know, and really crisscrossing uh, and making sure that, you know, um, each town, each district knew what the other was doing and um it, it, it's it's it, that was really you know to see community come together mm -hmm. uh it's been so powerful because i think that's one thing that is missing from um a lot of, of the human experience i don't think we get that chance you know, soldiers go to war and they unite you know mm -hmm. we don't get those opportunities to really show the, you know shine through and i think that was definitely the experience now that the pandemic is sort of getting forgotten um uh, the, the world is moving on the kids are moving on i know there are um, other challenges and um, you guys will have a big, um, big workload, but, um, you, you know, that work has been done before. So uh, those big challenges, I, I am so, um, uh, I, I feel like it, it's going to be a breeze again, you know, and, and you're getting Sharon <laughs> from, from Kalao, which is, 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 is another great gift. Um, so I will, I'll be here to support you guys, um, in any way I can, I'll, um, uh, especially as the high school is going through, uh, through those changes with landmark. So mm -hmm. I really look forward to that, seeing another, uh, area of success for mm -hmm. our students. So your leadership. you're not done yet. <laughs> so, uh, Evan and I joined in the same year. So we've been together for three years. Um, uh, this is definitely not goodbye because I know you're going to be w with us and helping us and encouraging us, which you've always done. And I really feel like you're all about understanding and not judgment, which is a key um, skill for a school committee member, because it's easy to do the judgment part and not understand. So I look forward to your contributions from CPAC, and I know we'll hear from you. So thank you. Thank you. I have a, oh sorry sorry one more comment I hadn't heard that you were joining the CPAC board and I'm I'm not surprised but um very very grateful and I think that's wonderful I um I really enjoyed working with you it was our short few months together but I always found you to be so honest and um authentic and kind and um a fierce advocate for for everyone who needs you all all the kids who need you so thank you so much it's been wonderful to get to know you I'm glad we'll get to keep in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll, 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 we'll do a big send off for you in Carlisle. So I'll save, I'll save a lot for that. But I just thank you for, for everything, for everything. I learned so much from you um, and hope to continue to be able to keep learning from you. So thank you. Okay, so now I can't be left out. Yeah. <laughs> Emma, your work is admirable. And um, I've been calling her, but she's going to be in contact with me. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to absorb as much of her knowledge as I can so we can continue our work to support our kids. So thank you, Ava. Thank you, Sean, for stepping up. Okay, now we can give a round. <laughs> and then I will turn over to Dr. Hunter for her recognitions. So first tonight, we have the CCHS Black Student Union. So I'm scrolling the Zoom board there. Amanda Thompson's on the advisor to the group. 
and we'll invite them to turn their cameras on and we'll cue the presentation and look forward to hearing the work of that great group. All right, well, my name is Amanda Thompson. Um, as Dr. Hunter said, I'm the advisor uh, currently for Black Student Union. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to two of our members, Malia and Amelia. Um, hi, I'm Melissa Pater. I've been going to CCHS for two years. I am a sophomore. Um, hi, I'm Amelia Razak. I'm a freshman and I've been in BSU for a year. Next slide, please. Um, BSU was created in 2020 in response to a racially charged and homophobic social media post in the community. A demographic breakdown of CCHS is that 4.5 of, of the CCH students are students of color, and out of 1,300 students, 56 students are, are METCO students. And our BSU meetings are held every Tuesdays and Fridays before school. Um, some of the work that we have done this year is creating a Kwanzaa board to kind of represent um, African culture and just culture in general. Um, each of the can candles represents something and on the candles we wrote what they represented. During Black History Month, every day we would go on the loudspeaker and share a prominent figure. Um, in Black history, such as Malcolm X, MLK, and Maya Angelou. Um, BSU is a processing space to have cultural conversations and to have conversations about national issues and issues within our school and to find a way to... It looks like you're muted. There you go. That's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's all I really have to say on that. Um, we hope to do a walkout and a peaceful demonstration just to bring awareness about national problems. And we also hope to do a mentorship program with the middle school to give the middle school students a place where they can feel safe and talk about stuff that may be happening nationally and stuff that might be happening in their community. Um, BSU also hopes to do a Black Student Union Summit with other districts within the school or within other schools within the district, I'm sorry, um, just so that we can hopefully start BSUs in other uh, schools and other committee uh, communities. Uh, we also hope to do a day of silence because for so many years we were silenced, um, not by choice, but we kind of want to do a day of silence because now it would be our choice and it's a movement that we kind of want to do. All right, that's the entire presentation, I think, Malia and Amelia. Um, if you had anything that didn't get picked up by the microphone, but I think you all said what you were going to say. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's all I yeah. really wanted to say. Yeah. Thanks so much for speaking for the club. Thank you so much for this. This is really great. And especially as freshmen and sophomores, I know it can be a little intimidating at a school committee meeting. So we certainly appreciate, um, you know, you bring this information to us. And I know this is a relatively new group at the high school. So we're excited for more to come. Um, you know, you probably have about 70 people that just heard your presentation. So thank you so much. It's really important to us. Does anybody have any questions or comments about their presentation? Feedback? I'll just add, I've met with them once and I'm meeting with them again next week. There's a lot of energy here. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can hear, it's a, a group of underclassmen. So there's a lot of potential of where this group is going to go and even what they're trying to 
to accomplish in the next few weeks. So more, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Definitely more to come. And yeah. I know that this group started with a bunch of kids that have graduated already. Right. So I'm excited to see that, you know, as freshmen and sophomores, you guys are really involved. So thank you I for love that. The, the overlap between the middle school and the high school, like yeah. bringing it back. I think that's so smart and mm -hmm. um, great. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to Ms. Thompson for coming. <clears throat> All right. And then our next recognition, we have a lot of people in this room and I we think do. one online. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Hunter. Yes. So we're really excited tonight to recognize a number of our retirees who have graciously come in person. We're really excited. So many of you are able to do that. And um, to Dave is on, on Zoom. Um, it's, it's an impressive group and it's across all of the schools. So we'll take a minute and just name each of them and maybe you can come a little closer and we can recognize you that way. Um, your dedication and service to the schools and the children of these districts for the longevity that I'm about to describe is just nothing short of outstanding and extraordinary. And there's just no question. I know all of you and um, what your legacy will be um, is just not up for discussion. No. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to try to do these in order of longevity, but they're not that way on my paper, so it may not come out that way. We'll do our best. Um, so first, I'm going to invite Sally Quinn Reed to come on up. Sally has been our Yay. Sally has been our director of Center for Parents and Teachers. You have all been hearing about that because it's dissolving along with Sally's retirement. Um, Adult and community education actually voted to to incorporate them last week. So. We're excited for Sally. She really has been the heart and soul of the Center for Parents and Teachers um, and really the whole group at points, depending on what's actually happened and sometimes voluntarily without any <laughs> salary. Um, so she's done that role for 13 years and we just wish you the best, Sally. So much going on for you with a new grandchild and all. We're excited yeah. to send you off to your new adventures. 18 great years. It was very stimulating and exciting and challenging and uh, Always with so thank you. Right, great. Thank you. Thank you. And then let's see here. Judy Olson, come on up. Judy is <laughs> Judy is currently our assistant principal at Alcott. That's a position she took on a couple of years ago, moving over from math specialist. It's actually our really creative, unique uh, assistant principal slash math specialist. <laughs> for a long bunch of reasons. And um, she's really made the job uh, really, really powerful in that combination. I know her principal Naomi would speak very highly of the support you've given to her, especially as she came on board after Sharon Young's longevity and all the, the benefits of that. So Judy, we wish you well after about six, how many years of service? 15. So we wish you well. And we know summers will be in Maine and with your family and we're just, so, so excited for you and what's next. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, uh, the children and the families have been just a real pilot, so it's been a real privilege. Thank you. Thank you. See, I already have it out of order, but Mike Germond, <laughs> come on up. <laughs> Mike has been the PE teacher at Willard for the last 15 years. And I've got to say, I go over there and those little people are rollerblading and climbing walls. And I don't think I have the skills they have, which is good. They're getting their courage early and um, it'll last them a lifetime. So, Mike, we're just excited by what you've done at Willard and the energy you bring to it. And you've gotten involved in the DEI work and and all of it. So thank you. families. <laughs> You all, administration, school committee, everybody has been so supportive over the years. I know this center, and it's the children especially, but on a new adventure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank, you, Thank you, Mike. Mary Jenkinson. Hello, Mary. Hello. <laughs> Mary is our school nurse um, and has been for 17 years. Do I have it right? 17 years at Sanborn. Um, with the seventh and eighth graders of the last few years and prior to that six, seven and eight and whatever other configurations we've <laughs> made at the middle schools over the years. Um, Mary, I can't say enough about the last few years in COVID. 
and the rock you have been and the support you've given to the Sanborn community, whether it's adults, kids, families, the 24 seven on call for what, two years, pretty much. Um, and we're just so grateful for all that she's contributed and we're wishing you well in a very well-deserved retirement. So thank you. Thank you very much. I have always loved my job. My colleagues and friends for the greatest way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is Rhonda here? Let's see, yeah. Rhonda. So Rhonda, we have a few people that aren't on the list. I know you've seen the list, so we'll just express our gratitude to her. I am next going to invite, well, let me go to Dave Davidson, who's on Zoom. Dave, are you still there? I saw him. I think he is. He has to unblock his camera so we can see him, though. Got him. Um, I don't see him anymore. All right. Keep an eye and let me know. Okay. Great. All right. So back here in person, I'm going to invite Cheryl Shea to come back up. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl's the one of the art teachers at Sanborn of the seventh and eighth graders, similar of Mary with the whatever configuration we gave her. She made work. Um, 23 years at the middle school. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl brings just a great energy having been in her classroom. Kids are actively engaged and doing all sorts of different mediums. And there's a lot going on all at once in that really big, monstrous oddly shaped room that we <laughs> ask you to make work. You know, that used to be the, that used to be the guidance department. And then they cut down on the walls and they made it like Yeah. <laughs> you make it work somehow. You make it look like it's meant for that purpose. <laughs> so Cheryl, we're really grateful. Um, you just inspired a generation of artists and we know that's a legacy you'll leave behind and we're excited for whatever's next. So thank you. No idea what's next, but thank you so that's very great. much. And thank you to all of you for that support. And the fact that you don't just count those middle school people, <laughs> they have a unique kind of energy. You need to have it too. Thank you, Cheryl. Eric Paul, would you come on up? Eric's retiring after 25 years, is that right? A Spanish teacher at the high school. Um, his longevity there is nothing short of extraordinary. He's traveled the world with kids. He's inspired the language. He's inspired connections of all kind. I will thank him personally for his role also as uh, CCTA president for a number of years and the real grace and gift that was to the entire <coughs> district, the teachers of the high school and those of us who worked with you simultaneously. So I'm gathering you're getting a little gift of your own since Mary's not retiring. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Eric, we chat about his four kids who've all come up through and Mary's at, Sanborn, at Peabody now. And um, Eric's off to new adventures. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Senor Paul. It's a true honor and privilege to have landed here in Concord 25 years ago. Uh, it's been the best possible job I can imagine. And thank you and to all the previous school committee members for all of your support, kids and teachers over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Senor Paul. And last but not least, Bob Farty, will you come up, please? <laughs> <laughs> And Kristen chime in anywhere along the way. Bob has served as our social studies, elementary social studies consultant for a number of years, but that's only to cap off a career of 54 years of service here in the Concord schools. So I don't even know how to describe the impact that that has had, but it's outstanding and amazing. And we're just so grateful you stayed with us as long as you have and inspired us all. And when we need throw to show up your present and willing and bus tours and whatever, whatever new idea we get. So Bob, thank you. You leave behind a legacy of Concord's history and it's young people knowing it's history. And we're very grateful for that. Thank you. I feel somewhat like the man who came to dinner. <laughs> I was very happy teaching all of school for 18 years. And then in the science curriculum specialist went on a leave of absence, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, would you like to come on for one year? 
to the science program. And 20 years later, I was still doing the science program. <laughs> And then at my official retirement in 2006, at the retirement party, uh, the assistant superintendent of schools, Dr. Rigby, came up to me and said, We want you to come back just for one year. <laughs> and I'm social studies. That was 16 years ago. So if anybody should say to me, This is just for one more year, I'm just saying thank you, but no thanks. <laughs> so um, I'm just echoing other people said, uh, parents, administrators, my colleagues, but most of all the students have made this almost remarkable life. I don't think of content as just a community. I think of content and content schools as a concept <laughs> steeped in ideas and ideals. And even though I'm just a very small thread in that tapestry, which we call the legacy and history of content, uh, I feel very fortunate to be entitled to that. And, uh, I think there's a wonderful scene in on Golden Pond, and then finally, and the power of uh, Norman Thayer, it's like David birthday said, how did, I, how did I get here so fast? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> I just like to end with one thought. Um, when I was teaching at Alcott, uh, at one of the hundreds of parent conferences I had over here, teaching thousands of students, a mom said to me, I asked my son, Jeff, what is it about this society that you like so much? And he said, he makes us want to learn. And at the end of the year, they submitted to me, all done in my attachment with calligraphy, all the names signed. Thank you. He made us want to learn. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I'm going to ask to indulge you with one more um, recognition. This one, not quite as happy. Um, this past week, we lost Beth Duddy, who was a longtime human resource uh, manager and administrative assistant here at the central office. Beth had been out for about 18 months um, following a stroke. So our hearts have been with her for a long time. Uh, but certainly her passing has left a mark on all of us, on all of them, and really we should all be so lucky to have touched a district like that. So if you could just humor me to read a little bit, maybe a quick moment of silence. Um, at the central office, Beth was a driving light. Beth worked very, very hard and was tireless in the time she would put in. For many years, she made every person that crossed her path feel important, which I'm sure many of you felt as she answered your questions or welcomed you as a new employee. This is from my email to the teachers. Uh, her heart and energy were huge huge, which influenced the climate of the HR office and most of the central office as well. We all knew how much she loved Boston College, Big Poppy, and a good party, which she was always more than happy to organize and host. She could tell a story with the best of them holding your attention for many minutes while you waited for that final punchline. One of our best moments was the fall of 2019. I, we promoted her to HR manager. Jared actually did that. And um, the whole entire K-12 staff gave her a standing ovation for her new role. And uh, I know that's left a mark on all of us and a story we're very grateful to be able to tell her family. So in gratitude and memory of Beth study, maybe a quick moment of silence. She'd want you to clap. I know. <laughs> she would. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you to all of you for your service. I think that um, my kids have experienced most of all of you in here. I know a lot of you uh, in the nurse's office was a favorite place for lots of my kids. Sometimes just to chat or have lunch or things like that. But, you know, <laughs> you will all be very missed. So thank you to our retirees and our condolences to Beth Duddy's family. Yes. So thank you all. Okay. Um, and you can feel free if the retirees, um, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. And uh, you can if you like to. We'd love to have you. But if you have something else to do, we, we certainly understand. Thank you all. Good night, Thank everyone. Good night. Plan. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Good night.
Okay, so next up we have the reading of the minutes. So I think everyone should have received the minutes from April 26th and May 1st from Erin. And any additions on those or comments? Okay. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from April 26th and May 1st, 2022. So moved. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. And a second? Second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No one? Okay, those are approved. Thank you. And then moving on to correspondence. So we'll start with uh, CPS sure. first. Um, we had a total of, I think, 12 pieces of correspondence, 10 of which were um, referencing the hostile work environment complaint, one of which was about the Metco School Committee seat. And one was a piece of correspondence asking for increased efforts in our diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Okay, and at the district, um, we've had 52 emails, 47 of them referenced the uh, hostile work environment complaint, one in support of the school committee, one in support of school committee process, and many referenced their support of our superintendent, Dr. Hunter. And that's all we had at the region. All right, and then on to chairs and liaisons reports. And I'm going to actually start on this one because it's kind of built off of the correspondence. So, as chair of the region, I had a, and I think all of you received the email, I had a conversation with Jack Huntress, who's the chair of Carlisle. And you all saw um, our correspondence and all the points that. Uh, I sent over to Carlisle because I do believe that we will be on the June 1st Carlisle agenda. So I just want to make sure the public has the same information that I gave out to the Carlisle School Committee. And I just am going to read the five points that I sent out um, to Carlisle because this will be on their agenda on June 1st. So the first point is, uh, and these are all in reference to the hostile work environment complaint, there has been no vote on an investigation. There have been no depositions. There is no knowledge of leaks from the executive sessions. The joint committee is committed to a process of resolving issues with the superintendent. And a settlement discussion has started with the superintendent and meetings continue between district council, the school committees and the superintendent and her legal counsel. So that was all that I had in terms of my report. And then, we can just go around and everyone can give their updates. Um, so let's see, FinCom. Cynthia, do you have anything from FinCom? They haven't met. They haven't met, okay. No. Uh, next up, Metco Superintendent's Advisory Council. Carrie? Yeah, so um, we met last week on May 11th with um, Dr. Hunter and Andrew, um, Nanichi, Tracy, myself, and, um, and then there was probably about 10 um, members of the the advisory council. It was a very frank, um, collaborative, um, productive meeting. We talked about three key things. One was the policy to add a MECO representative to the Concord and Concord Carlisle Regional School Committees, which I won't go into because I know we'll talk about later yeah. in the agenda. Um, the second was professional development. And Andrew gave an overview of the various professional development paths offered to and then also mandated um, for all faculty. Um, and we had a, a good conversation about what um, what that currently looks like and some some questions about how that can be improved upon. Um, and then I think worth noting was Andrew talked about um, the fact that a lot of the eighth graders in or all of the eighth graders in Con Concord and then also the eighth graders in Carlisle are undergoing um, DEI training themselves through um Playbook initiatives, yes, through the Celtics. And um, so they'll all be entering ninth grade with the same um, training. And then it, as part of their ninth grade academy, um, they'll be participating in ADL training. So I think that this is going from staff. Our, the school committee did a nine-hour training recently. Students, it's um, it's really exciting to see all of this work taking place. Um, and then the last thing we talked about was the a letter um, by the superintendent uh, prohibiting racial slurs. Um, and we had a really good conversation, I thought, about um, what that looks like. So Dr. Hunter shared a draft that she had written, and um, we all went around talking about reactions to it. Um, and I think that there was wide consensus that um, 
while it's critical that we do this quickly, it's really important. It's more important that we do it well. And that has to be partnered with education in the form of like a, you know, a speaker or an assembly or breakout groups or some type of thoughtful um, um, academic to understand the history and um, the impact of, of these words on individuals and, and people at our school. So um, I thought it was a really great meeting. Um, it was certainly helpful to for me to hear a lot of the different perspectives. Um, I don't I don't want to speak for you, but I thought it was a really great meeting. It was, a good it was about an hour and 45 minutes. Great. OK. That's it. Yeah. So um, can you just tell us when and where you met? Oh, yeah. It was on Zoom. It was on May 11th. Uh, was it evening, daytime? Yep, seven. Okay, uh, great. Good, good, good. 6.30. And then uh, all eighth graders in both Carlisle and Concord receiving the Playbook Initiative training? Yeah, yes. so it was in Carlisle. It was in Concord, and Sarah shared that yeah. uh, Carlisle was, had adopted it, and I think they, were, they did it last They did week, it on the right? same day. They did it, I think or it was like in days apart. apart. Yeah, yeah. The same week. Great. And I think, having we been doing ADL training at the high school for some years? This isn't yes. a new initiative, right? No, it's a but bigger scope. It's a, it's a bigger, so, it was so an advisory before. They were doing an advisory. Right. And so I think you'll probably hear, you might hear part of that was an Andrew's presentation that you'll see um, that tonight. they were going to roll it into ninth grade academy. So it's part of all ninth graders will get it versus the 15 minutes in advisory. Okay. You know. Good. Kind of monthly or however we'll, long. We'll hear about it. that tonight. Yeah, or, uh, I I don't know if he's at, he it's may reference. It's reference. But okay, so we will hear more. You'll hear more about okay, that for the region. And I think that it's just in the planning process too. But it for is ninth, good for to be run year. through ninth grade academy. Okay, so that be, might be more of a ninth grade academy presentation too. So awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so we also have the DEI strategic steering committee. So that's Sharon. Yes, so we met on the 18th with Andrew uh, via Zoom. Um, the goal was to review, revise, and offer feedback on the DEI priority area goals and objectives. Um, we met as a group and we broke into subgroups to discuss uh, six main topics. Should I go into the topics? Or? No, that's okay. No, okay. that's okay because you know what? We have those from Andrew okay, and he's coming after. So. And so after those discussions, we um, met again as a group to just offer thoughts, suggestions, and concerns. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Sustainability. Is that you? Yeah, yes. Sure. Right. Um, the sustainability subcommittee met actually today, um, this uh, this afternoon, and we got the highlight for me was um, we got an update from the green team at the high school, just the continued work they're doing, like so many of the other groups at um, the high school and middle school, these, these kids and their advisors are so committed, so enthusiastic. Um, it's so clear and evident. I think, you know, Kristen can corroborate that. Um, and it is, it is nice to see, um, you know, different groups from the schools and the towns um, together collaborating and discussing um, priorities, um, essentially for now and in the future. So, but again, the highlight was the green team. Green team. Okay. That's great. And you also had CPAC. Oh do yeah, CPAC? I do have CPAC. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, um, one of the more exciting pieces of news was that Eva is joining the board. Um, uh, the CPAC kicked off their, um, meeting talking about the ways in which they, as their own board can champion DEI initiatives and, and their, they are currently discussing the addition of three seats to board positions. Those seats would be a specific Carlisle member. And I think actually that is the role that Eva is going to move into, um, a specific METCO seat um, to represent the METCO community and the potential for um, a specific seat for um, an ELL parent. Um, again, those are just preliminary discussions um, but they are really committed to um, demonstrating, um, you know, how they can be more inclusive and, and intersect with the work that is sort of happening at a larger level um, in the district. Uh, next, um, we discussed inclusive design, which is a really um, important aspect of how uh, kids with disabilities are gonna be represented at the middle school. Uh, Lori was gracious enough to come and sort of give an update as to some of the new spaces that um, she is currently working on, um, you know, developing with the staff, the architects and 
Um, and it was great to see the, the CPAC was able to see for the first time some newer spaces and the, how those spaces are being realized and how even little tiny things, it always it does never see ceases to amaze me how little things that look ordinary are sometimes actually quite thoughtful and are really based in things like inclusive design. So, you know, to the average person, me, I wouldn't necessarily notice them. So um, working with the CPAC to ensure that, um, you know, their their advice and um, is incorporated into that has been paramount. So we'll have continued updates in that arena. And then, um, as always, I can't say enough. Debbie has been just such um, such a great asset this year because the way that the committee and uh, the the CPAC board and the administration now interact is just is just very fluid and it's very collaborative. Um, the CPAC board every month, uh, Sarah, you'll see this, will come always with a robust amount of questions, and Debbie is just um, she's whip smart and and has you know it has is able to engage them in a really collaborative dialogue and and i think just it's a i i wrapped up the meeting by saying um that it has been so nice to see the sort of evolution of that throughout the year and um i think a lot of gratitude goes out to deb and to Lori um for ensuring that relationship has been prioritized um so yeah um that was really it Right on the CPAC farm. All right, thank you. Um, and then select board, is that you or court? That's yeah, there was really, um, I mean, I was there yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yes, uh, last <laughs> night. And there really wasn't anything relevant to the school committee okay. um, discussion. They set okay. their goals. They opened and closed four hearings, which was really interesting. And yeah, no, there wasn't really any activity this week. Okay. And did I leave anybody out? Well, there's one that's not a real good, uh, just town of Car Carlisle, town of Carlisle yep. update that the uh, parking, the parking on the ballot passed. Oh, okay, great. Which means what? What? What does that mean? The, the, paving. the paving. The paving. Paving. Oh, oh the car parking. Oh. I thought you meant. Yes. Like, <laughs> sorry. Well. <laughs> the paving, the paving project. Okay, paving so. Yep. Um, passed. So, so that will come to the Concord ballot in September. Yeah. Very early in September. Yes, the primary. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Great. Um, I think that's all we had for there. So on to our Can I ask a quick question? Did oh, yeah. you guys get emails inviting you to the chair's breakfast? I did no. not. Mm -mm. I saw you emailed Chris, but he has not. I tried. Yeah. But I know they're really in a huge transition. Yeah. Um, so so you yet. probably need to follow up with them again. Okay. There's an, uh, probably just copy Matt. Okay. Because he's the chair. See him. Okay. Um, and because they have two new people. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Matt's there. Sorry, we to just call you started. Out. So, and please come on down to the next chair's <laughs> breakfast. It'll be at 8 a.m., not at 9 a.m. We're going from a brunch to a breakfast. Nice. That's <laughs> yeah, the third Wednesday of each month. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it Zoom or in person? It is I, I Zoom. Think it will be Zoom for the next Zoom. one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Cynthia, I should follow up with Chris for to get that invitation. I would they have two new people. Okay. So I don't think he's the point person anymore. Got it. Okay. So I'll that's why with Matt. Yes. Okay, great. And I follow yeah. up with Sarah. I will also be joining you. Great. So it's both of us. So we'll just follow up together. Yes, we will follow up. Great. Share the link. Okay. Thank perfect. You. Perfect. All right. All right, on to our discussion, which I want to invite Andrew Nimichi to join us. Um, we sent out, I hope all of you got the DEI draft strategic plan this week. And Andrew's going to do a very brief presentation and give us kind of an update overview. And then we're going to have some discussion. If we have any questions for Andrew or just general discussion, that's how we'll roll that. So on to Andrew. All right, I'm going to share my screen. So give me one second. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> All righty. So good evening, everyone. Uh, Miss Sharon Witt, it is a pleasure to see you on the uh, school committee there. Uh, welcome <laughs> aboard. 
Uh, again, everyone, uh, my name is Andrew Nemich. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for Concord and Concord Carlisle Public Schools. I want to take a moment to thank Dr. Hunter and the school committee for inviting me here uh, this evening. The draft of the strategic plan, which I am presenting on this evening, is an actionable plan grounded in our shared commitment to anti-racism and advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in our schools. Our DEI strategic planning process officially began uh, this past fall in September, 2021. From September to January, uh, through my DEI roundtable discussions, I had the opportunity to uh, meet and listen uh, to various stakeholders in our school community, uh, students, parents, faculty, staff, administrators, and the school committee who represent uh, unique and diverse perspectives across our schools. These stakeholders had a lot of feedback to share with me about our DEI and anti-racism efforts over the years. Through February and March, I disaggregated the data from my DEI roundtable discussions and presented my findings, uh, my findings uh, to the school committee on March 8th. At that presentation, I shared critical DEI uh, priority areas and emerging themes that now have informed the development of our draft strategic plan. We transitioned into phase three of the strategic planning process at the start of April with a draft of the strategic plan, the priority areas, goals, and objectives. So tonight I'm gonna to spend you know, a brief moment uh, talking about those refined uh, priority areas and then the goals um, that have since been reviewed by the uh, uh, Strategic Steering Committee as of last week. So the six overarching priorities and goals highlighted here, I believe will advance our mission to be an inclusive, equitable, and anti-racist school district. The goals and objectives of the strategic plan will be prioritized over the next five years. The priority areas and goals are as follows. Number one, priority area is focused on professional development. We know, and I've said this many times in past presentations, that the work of dismantling systems of oppression begins with ourselves by examining our own unconscious biases, identity, privilege, social position, and power. So the goal within this priority area is to enhance the accessibility of professional development opportunities for all faculty and staff, including students in that work, focusing on increasing our cultural competency and embedding anti-racist practices to meet the diverse learning needs of each student. Priority number two is focused on cultivating an inclusive, equitable, and anti-racist school culture. The uh, culture is something that surrounds us all. Students, faculty, and staff come to school with a wide range of cultural backgrounds experiences, knowledge, and beliefs. I believe that the administration of any school district sets the climate of the school and the students, the faculty, and the staff, and even the parents influence how the school's culture is then experienced. Within this priority area, the goal here is to, again, cultivate a welcoming, respectful, and anti-racist school culture that models behaviors centered on equity, inclusion, and belonging, and balances psychological safety with accountability. Our goal area number three is focused on culturally responsive curriculum, equity, and inclusion in the classroom. Culturally, uh, uh, cultural responsiveness rather, requires that educators and staff actively welcome and learn more about diversity in all of their students, valuing their students' intersecting social identities, their lived experiences, family dynamics, their aspirations, and much more. The goal of within this priority area is to continue promoting inclusive and equitable practices in the classroom and a culturally responsive curriculum that affirms students' social identities and increases their understanding and appreciation 
of diverse perspectives and learning styles. Priority number four is focused on student and family engagement. The goal here is to leverage the cultural wealth of our students and families by creating partnerships that recognize their voice, contributions, and needs. Cultural differences, including that of race, ethnicity, language, gen gender, sexual orientation, disability, et cetera, should be treated as assets when it comes to teaching and learning. And we need to leverage and celebrate these uh, uh, cultural differences in our schools and especially in our classrooms. While schooling has traditionally privileged the capital of families from dominant backgrounds, being culturally responsive in how we engage our students and families, especially our BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, People of Color students and families will truly acknowledge and value the wealth of knowledge that they have, uh, that they have uh, to, to further enrich our diversity, uh, our diverse uh, uh, community. The fifth uh, priority area is focused on hiring, mentoring, and retention. The goal here is simple, to increase recruitment, hiring, mentoring, and retention of educators of color. And I've said this in the past, if we say we are committed to diversity, then we need to prioritize the representation of racially and ethnically diverse educators in our schools, in teaching and leadership positions. Last but not least, uh, the sixth priority area is focused on transparent communication and institutional accountability. The goal here is to utilize meaningful data to hold ourselves accountable and be transparent in our communication about how we achieve the goals and objectives of the strategic plan. While the burden of accountability is especially felt by school leaders, I believe this work still remains a shared responsibility for everyone in our school community. If we are to sustain a strong commitment to anti-racism and advance in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in our schools. To ensure transparency and accountability in our strategic planning process, a strategic steering committee consistent of 24 members with representation from high school students, school committee members, school administrators, faculty, staff, and parents has been established as of last week. We held our first meeting uh, last week on Wednesday, May 18th. The steering committee will help guide the implementation of our strategic plan. The committee currently has three tasks to accomplish. Number one, as of last week, the steering committee actually reviewed the DEI priority areas that you just saw, as well as the goals and objectives of the draft strategic plan. So that occurred last week. Number two, this week, actually tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, May 25th, the steering committee will assist me in finalizing a unifying mission and vision statement that reflects our commitment to this work. And then lastly, before our last steering committee meeting on June 9th, the committee will determine for year one, the objectives we will focus on in each goal area of the strategic plan and the key metrics that we will use to measure and track progress. So year one is just next year, 2022-23 uh, school year. Now, again, just as I said our, in the previous slide, our strategic plan is going to be laid out over the next five years. But again, you know, while there are many uh, objectives within each goal area, we are going to focus on um, drafting uh, 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 pretty much a strategic plan that uh, that's going to be focused on next year and the objectives that we hope to accomplish for the next school year. While I won't spend time going through the um, objectives of each uh, defined goal area, I do want to acknowledge that the um, school committee has had a chance to review the objectives outlined within each goal area. And so again, I won't spend too much time on that, but I will end on this. Before I open it up for questions, comments, um, I want to share with you that this is my proposed mission and vision statement for our strategic plan. 
tomorrow again on Wednesday tomorrow uh, the the um, the strategic uh, steering committee will actually meet as a group and they will either revise this proposed statement or they will work within their own breakout groups to draft a new mission and vision statement for our strategic plan. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just read what I have proposed here for our mission and vision statement. Our mission in the Concord and Concord Carlisle Public Schools is to recognize, value, and respect our diversity of race, ethnicity, gender identity, and expression, religion, disability, sexual orientation, and social economic status. We are committed to fostering healthy learning environments that balance psychological safety with accountability and model behaviors centered on inclusion, belonging, and anti-racist practices. We believe our moral responsibility is to actively confront our own unconscious biases when they show up in our practice and, and the climate of our schools. We will challenge our policies, behaviors, and beliefs that perpetuate racist and discriminatory ideas and actions, which disproportionately impact our underrepresented and historically marginalized uh, groups. To become competent in the cultures of those we work and learn with, we will engage meaningfully in cross-cultural engagements that foster trust and promotes a greater sense of cultural awareness. In the Concord and Concord Carlisle Public Schools, we will bolster equity and justice for our Black, Indigenous, people of color, students, parents, faculty, and staff. The broader impact of our actions will ensure that everyone in our school community is treated fairly, feels a deep sense of belonging, and has access to opportunities and advancements they need to thrive. So again, that is a proposed mission and vision statement that the steering committee tomorrow will have a chance of reading over. They will make revisions or offer up their own mission and vision statement. So now I'll open it up for discussion. Um, so appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Andrew. This is greatly appreciated. It's been a, a busy year of work for you, as we know, and we're glad to get you back here with us. Um, we did have a, Cynthia had a question about, can you talk a little bit about, um, this was right before your presentation, about ADL training within ninth grade academy and how that's going to sure. look? Sure. I can certainly do that. I don't want to put the carriage in front of the horse. Uh, uh, if you're not ready, it's totally fine. Still in process. Totally. I will. I will <laughs> gladly. I will gladly talk the briefly about it. Uh, so Be very I, briefly, like high level, very yeah, briefly. Absolutely, and I think I overheard Cynthia. I will. I did overhear some of the discussion. And as you know, you know our ADL training program. We've had a long-standing partnership with the ADL. We've held trainings every year for our, our upper class uh, students, our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Um, and you know, it's a three-day training program. And after the three-day training, we select a number of students who then go into advisory, um, advisory to facilitate discussions. However, over the many years we've been uh, we've been running the ADL training program, the feedback we have received from students and parents is that it does not. Um, our advisory program does not allow enough time for these student leader, leaders to actually facilitate um, discussions on race um, uh, and, and, and just different uh, sort of isms that, that, that appear in our schools. And so going into next year, I made the proposal that, that we would expand our ADL training program and train all of our incoming ninth graders through the ninth grade academy program. And so currently, we are working with the ninth grade academy leaders to ensure that um, that this training does happen next year. We have already set dates for next year. The trainings will happen. Uh, there's one in October, one in November, and one in March. Uh, we are waiting for confirmation from the ADL that they will that they are able to meet on those dates. And and in, in addition to um, the number of, of instructors, ADL instructors that they are going to send to us. Uh, very recently, actually, as of, uh, I believe last week, um, this, this proposal for the ADL ninth grade uh, training, um, I, I actually submitted a grant proposal to the CEF. And so um, I'm happy to announce that the CEF is going to fund uh, the majority of the cost for the training program next year. Um, and, and so, you know, that's exciting news. And so we're just, you know, we're Really working together again, the CCHS admin team, myself, 
and the ninth grade academy leaders to ensure that this training does occur um, in the fall and then later on in the spring. That's great. Does anyone have any questions, comments, um, discussion? No, those are my questions. That's it. I'm sorry. I was like, I should just let you <laughs> ask okay. them. That's sorry about that. No, no. Thank you so much, Andrew. I, this 23 members is impressive. I'm excited to see parents on that as well mm -hmm. as staff and members from our organization. It's a tremendous undertaking and I appreciate the diversity <laughs> of the people that you've gathered together in a room. It's important and I, I'm appreciative of all that representation. And I think the students on that committee too, it's great to have students on the committee. And there was, I think in the breakout rooms, I think some some people that were actually on the committee are, are listening on the call tonight. The teachers um, like were just so excited. They didn't really want to go back to the main room. Like they had more work to do. So they were ready to go. So I thought that was great too. But definitely a lot of work has gone into this this year. We certainly appreciate, you know, this format. And the goal is next year to get Andrew on the agenda with us and to really have him back more often, at least four times a year, and just to give us updates. And I think that, you know, one of the teachers, um, I, I don't even know if it was a teacher that commented, but somebody said, you know, this seems like so much work and it is a five-year plan and how are we going to monitor that? So do you want to talk a little bit about how to monitor, you know, what's happening in our in the plan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, I, I do want to emphasize that this is this, this current iteration of the strategic plan is in the draft form. And so with the steering committee, right, the goal of, of this group is actually to determine uh, the different metrics that we are going to use uh, to measure each objective, right? Um, and so, you know, I, I can I can probably give you an example of, um, of one of the metrics, which is an easy one. In terms of under the priority area uh, of uh, culturally responsive curriculum, one of the ob objectives is to assess uh, patterns of disproportionality in student achievement and identify research-based data-driven enrichment programs similar to our, our current partnership with the Calculus Project, right? And so how do we measure disproportionality, right? We're going to look at MCAS data, SATs uh, data, STAR assessments, uh, students' placement in honors and AP uh, courses, right? And so while, while those are just some of the elements within uh, uh, some of the metrics that we're going to use to measure that specific objectives, you can imagine that there are, and, and I'm sure Chris and Herbert can share with you, there are many other data points that we can that we can um, uh, uh, use to measure uh, disproportionality uh, around student achievement. So that's literally one one focus area. Um, but again, the, the the goal of the of the steering committee is to determine what metrics we're going to use for every single objective with, within every. Um, within every uh, uh, goal area and, and, and uh, a priority area in the strategic plan. And where you're, the meetings right now, so we have three before the end of the year. And then remind me, we're thinking once a month next year? Yes, so currently uh, we are, I'm hoping that most of, of, of the members on the steering committee will continue on uh, in the fall. We will begin meeting right in September. And the goal is to meet on a monthly basis. This is great. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anything? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. And, um, you know, we've enjoyed your time with us this year. I've certainly enjoyed your time in our DEI subcommittee and, and all other places that you've been doing this work. So thank you for that. And we look forward to next year. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, the equity audit, we're actually not prepared to have that in the agenda. So we're just going to skip down to That's my mistake. The uh, Metco School Committee representative policy. And I think that Aaron is going to share the screen with us. Um, as I mentioned, court is not with us tonight and court chairs policy, but we really want to get to this tonight and so the committee as a whole is going to work on this policy and kind of how we've done um some other things as a committee aaron's going to have it on the screen carrie's going to make changes 
And we have definitely gotten some feedback. We've heard the feedback. So this is an opportunity for us to have a discussion about that. Um, yes. Cynthia. Did everybody get the email today? From yes. The, MECO? the region got it. I saw it was sent to the Cocker School Committee. Did you get it or no? Oh, it just, yeah, but it didn't go to the, it didn't go to the region. I can forward it. Yeah. 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 Okay. You forward that. Sorry about that. And I don't have it in front of me, but you okay. guys do, I'm sure. So we've um, certainly had feedback from the community. We've had feedback from the MetGo Collaborative. We've had feedback from the superintendent's MetGo Advisory Council. So we're taking all that feedback into consideration. And I do have, you know, some recommendations that I'm comfortable with, um, but I'd love to hear everybody else's feedback on that. Just out of discussions and emails and everything else, I think because I think that we need to, you know, talk about that and take all those things into consideration. So, in looking at this, we initially thought on policy, and at court, Evan and I um, said on policy that there would be one non-voting representative. But we have certainly heard the feedback and the need to have two representatives, one K through five. Uh, K through eight, sorry, and the other nine through 12. And the language, Carrie, I actually have a suggestion. Okay. Do you um, want this ed in edit format or do you want me to just make the changes? Like, do you want to see how it's like crossed um, out? Yeah, you can put an edit format. Okay. That's fine. Great. And then I think that's better. Do I not have in front of me? I think that I think I left that piece of paper at home. Um, but we, I would like to suggest two non-voting representatives who shall represent families participating in the Concord and Carlisle MECO program. The other feedback that we did have um, was if the representatives could be current families or alumni families. And I would like to also add that in there. And I'd love to hear everybody else's thoughts on that. Those two changes first. One would be two representatives and the other would be alumni and current MEDCO families. Cynthia, yep. Um, so did you say you wanted or did not think it should be specific that's one is K-8 and one is CCAHS or no? Well, the request is for yeah. two. So yeah. one K-8 and one CCHS. Yeah, I was just saying two, but we do need to make that. Okay. Um, I think that would be helpful to have. Would yeah, you agree with that? I, I just, K8 more we should put it in there. Or yes. we should, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, it would be good not to have two high school and the representation right. from. Okay. Um, right. So I think we should specify that. That's a good catch right there. Or the reverse, yep. right? Yep. Because I think that um, part of the, in the discussion that we had was that it can be, the needs K-8 are very different than 9 through 12, the needs that families have and, you know, different issues that might come up. And I think it's, I think yeah. it's important to know that they'll be representing the students with those interests, but the member, the representative themselves may or may not be a parent because mm -hmm. we are going to be inclusive of yeah. alumni and, and past participants. So, so I don't, so I do think it, it matters to some extent for mm -hmm. clarity, just so that they represent mm -hmm. interest, but it won't be a requirement that they have a, you know, any student in those Right. Group. Similar to, you know, Here. you know, sitting on this committee, you know, some of us mm -hmm. have children in the district, some don't. And so that would be the same type of thing. Yep. Sarah. And and that person could act as sort of a conduit for questions or, or concerns or issues that are more targeted to the K-8 versus yep. the, high, you know, from the public. Mm -hmm. if they, if there are people trying to them. Yep. Um, Do you have anything, Karen? No, I, I support both changes. Both changes. Sharon, we're good? Okay. Uh, so let's I changed see. it. I don't, do you want to wordsmith it? Or yeah, just... so we have to wordsmith the alternate because it's, because if we make the change to have two representatives, then there will not be an alternate any longer. And I do think, you know, that both, um, you know, the K to eight and the nine so to 12 we, person will be an opportunity for them to get to know each other. And, and, you know, certainly if one person couldn't come, the other one could be representative and hopefully, you know, they'll work with the collective and any other, you know, parent group and the superintendent's advisory council to just get the information 
out there. The other, so do you want to delete the next sentence? This, in addition, there shall be an alternate who will act on behalf of the representative. Yes. That's great. Yep. There's no strike. There's just, there. Yeah, that's good. There we go. Yeah, All right. Perfect. See, we're getting we're getting better at uh, editing in public. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Mexico. And so that would have to be Mexico representatives with an S. Yep. We'll be authorized to sit at all open sessions of the school committee and to discuss matters of concern in a fashion similar to a school committee members. And in regards to executive session, we definitely would need guidance from MASC. I don't even know that that's a, I don't think that's a possibility at all. Cynthia. Um, so just to the point, is it worth going to the town of Concord and getting the opinion of council on the possibilities regarding a home rule petition and all that? I mean, we would have fashioned this in this way now, but just going forward, because that question is up from so many different people. Right. Um, just to address that. I, I, the voting versus the non-voting. Correct. Member, yes. Yeah. I think that that would be something that after the policy is finished. Right. Then we can craft that because that's a longer process. Right. I just want to maybe yeah. we could sort of informally state a commitment to, to following through on that or. Sure. sure. Um, do you feel comfortable with that? Um. Sure, I would look to Lori for that a little bit um, well, would, mm -hmm. in terms of. That's us. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to ask, but I'm going to ask Lori's Can hanging on that. Because you want it included in the policy? No. Oh. No. I just want to make it sort of a, a oh. commitment to follow through and see what the options are with the town, of, you know, be the, the select board of the town council, the clerk. Right. Um, Which would be us. But then Lori had also spoken with Representative Tammy Govano. So. I, so we have that as the, you know, the legislative piece, but we would have to deal with the town of Concord piece. Well, so, would we, the, the, would the, so the town of Concord, I'm pretty sure, would have to vote a home rule petition at, at the, you know, at, at our town meeting. Certainly. So Alexa we, and I can and pursue we that. Do have a special town meeting coming up in the fall? I've heard rumors of. I'm not sure why. Not for okay. Not for any of our stuff, but um, but so I was just wondering, you know, just to show good faith to these people who've been asking. I, I think we're going to hit a pr pretty hard wall on this um, process because I think it'll be ruled unconstitutional mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, right. to have somebody vote who doesn't live in our on mm -hmm. the town of Concord. But okay, yeah, yeah I think so, that will be ongoing yeah. work. Yeah, okay. that'll I be on liaison with the town hall. So okay. if you'd like me to, we can ask you. To. Okay, so maybe um, yeah, you and I can work with Lori to do that with town yeah. hall. All right, great. Um, okay. We can certainly report back as to any progress, progress that we've yep. got. Or just general information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you you're really testing that. my eyes now. In addition to, in addition, the METCO representatives may accept other responsibilities, including committee assignments as determined and assigned by the chairs of the Concord and Concord Carlisle School Committees. Yes. Yep. Any edits to that? I don't see any there. Anyone have any edits to that? Oh, I have to look at this one. This is much easier to see. <laughs> you can, can you look? You can look on your computer too. No, I can't. I just don't have it pulled up right now. Oh. Uh, okay. So, okay, the two Metco representatives shall be chosen by Boston resident Metco families via a biannual election for a two-year term. That I think that's fine. Everyone agree with that's fine. That yeah. sentence fine. Yeah. I, Yep, Sarah, can I go back to because we did give on that on the question of executive session participation and um, I just want to, you know, just just to clarify to the public, like what, what the barrier is there that, the, that you can't participate in executive session, session. Right. But also there's definitely, you know, school committee work is is often unknown outside unless you're in the school committee you don't know so there was a comment about that like the budget work happens in executive session and that's i just wanted to clarify right yes so that the that budget is, is always done in the public that's done in the public yes. and so so it's just worth and noting that the things that happen in executive session are very particular, very narrow, yes. very, very narrow. And, narrow. and there are, I, I think there were six, you know, reasons for executive session and those are listed in our policies. So if anyone on the call is listening, you can look at our school committee policies on executive session and you can see the reasons for it to just see things that we can discuss in executive session. But budget is always discussed in the public. Yeah. So I just wanted to. Yep. Sure. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so all Boston 
resident Concord or Concord Carla Metcalf parents or guardians will be eligible for this position. So if we can also add or alumni families. And alumni families. And yeah, and alumni families. Thank you. And if anyone has any comments, just jump in. Okay. An election will take place through a fair and open process determined by the superintendent's Metco Advisory Council. So we had that discussion, um, and Carrie and Lori, feel free to jump in, that we had that discussion with the superintendent's Advisory Council. And I think that that it really was that the only way to get the information to every Metco family is through either Lori, Deb Jemison. Can Barbara Burgos do it too or no? Mm -hmm. She could do it. So it's really the email gets sent through the district somehow. Mm -hmm. um, the other option that we discussed is the formation of a Boston PTG in the association, which would then parallel the PTGs that run at the schools, in which case people can opt in to the membership and receive the information that way. But first would require the establishment of that kind of organization. And what we are trying to do is to have the, the Boston, uh, we have a few different groups happening right now. And I think that's what we're all struggling with. We have the superintendent's medical advisory council. We have the collective. And then if there was a PTG or something like that. So really the, the, Boston families are going to run their own election. That That's everybody's goal is for the Boston families to run their own election. So I think it's just a matter of wording it properly so it feels like that and sounds like that. Yeah. yeah. Can you just, I know you did so much work on figuring what other people do. Can you, yeah. can you remind us if there were any good takeaways from like, no, or does um, nothing apply was, to our- I would say that um, in Bedford, the superintendent appoints which that was not an option um, in Lincoln. I think that the superintendent also appoints or somebody just offers to do it on behalf of their school committee. And Weston has the best policy because they do have the Boston Weston parents uh, organization because it's BWPO, which is like a PTG and they run their own election and everything's great. And they have, they have their regular PTO meetings. And then they also have the, Boston Weston PTO meetings at the same time. So there's a lot of discussion back and forth. And so their process was the best. Um, but, you know, I, I think the goal is that, that the Boston families will run their own election, however they want that to happen. And so I just want the policy to, to recognize that and sound like that if you have any suggestions. Alexa. Casting the widest net, however, to ensure that all families have access would likely at least alerting to the fact, like, could it be no. two steps? The alert to the fact that there is an election could be handled, let's say, by Deb Jemison, mm -hmm. because it would ensure that every family had the knowledge and understanding that this was happening. And then, I don't know. I guess, how do you... so? How do we run that? Election? And this, does this have to be, um, does this fall into like your point of like the how, how we do things? Like, do we need to right. include this yeah. in this policy this, at all? Do we just take we it out and strike this and say this will be a, a part of the process yeah. to figure yeah. out how we do this? Yeah. And then because charge, the policy, the can, charge the advisory group to, with figuring to that out. Yeah. yeah. So it's yep. a collaborative discussion. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Good catch. We don't do the how, we do that. Yep. So do we, are we then deleting this sentence? An election will take place through a fair and open Can process. Can we just say through a fair and open process mm -hmm. and put a period after that? Sure. Is everybody that like that? So that's what it looked like. Because I think what we're all saying is is kind of the same. We, we don't want it to be an appointment position. We want it to be a, a fair and open process mm -hmm. elect, election, yeah. really. Okay, so the MECA representatives, so you'll need an S there. Well, I think we're going to delete this. Oh, we're going to delete that one. Yeah. Strike it. Okay. Because this would be, they would still, I don't know if you want to include oh, yeah. something about renomination since it now includes alumni family. Yeah. Just delete it. Yep, just delete it. 
And in some cases of other districts, uh, the representative has actually been fairly consistent for five years, seven years, for a long period of time. And I, you know, if we just leave it purposely vague so that that can happen, if that if we have a family that's you know really active and really wants to say part of it. Um, so a vacancy, I, I do think we still need, the policy committee felt like vacancy was important to determine what would happen if there was a vacancy, because we want to ensure that there's always representation. And especially now that it's going to be two, we do have to deal with vacancy. Do we say determined by, instead of this, the Metco Advisory Council may nominate, yeah. they would determine how, I don't know, or do you want the advisory council to nominate a person? I, I I feel like the collective's feedback was that they wanted to appoint someone if a vacancy occurred. Is there much of a difference between I, nominate or appoint? Um, is that semantics? I don't it know. It really is. I'm being, um, I'm genuinely asking. But we can't but, include the collective Right. currently because they're in the not, language, right? You yeah. know, that was just right. their feedback. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is, was there ever a conversation? Sorry if I missed this. Was there a conversation about having it sort of mirror how the school committee operates? Like if, you know, that you can, in a little bit of a different way. Because in Carlisle, if we have a vacancy, then you nominate. So, right. But, but it, could, we you, don't do could you either. nominate for a certain period of time and like for the remainder of the school year and then have an election yeah. for the next one that finishes off that term? You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, so when we discuss this at policy, um, we discussed you know, nominated person for appointment to complete the unexpired two year term. Because so I think it would mirror our in, process here. Would, right. Yeah. Cynthia? It's not regarding this. So if you want to finish. Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, so the question is do we want it to read the superintendent's MECO advisory? Council. Council may nominate a person yeah. for appointment. Well, I think so, because I think that's the only <laughs> mechanism we have right now to do that. And we can amend it in the future if right. that changes. And we did talk about the fact that policies we revisit all yeah. the time. And we were, you know, we're going to try this and, and see what happens to get the policy in place. And then if we need to make an adjustment, the policy committee can do that. So, yes, I want to know what uh, is the timeline? on this approximately to get to getting this done or to yeah getting right mm -hmm. right so we need to once we have this policy then i believe we need to do we have to have a second reading so mm -hmm. we need a first reading a second reading so the goal is to have someone in place by september good okay. so we have a few more meetings left yep. to do that yep. and then we can get some more feedback from the superintendent's advisory council advisory council on May 31st, see how this looks, and then bring it back to the full committee for first and second read. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. One thing just to note that um, came up in the, the last meeting with the advisory council is that um, one thing that the collective had been asking for was a stipend. And Millie at Metco Inc. had offered to um, to fund that essentially to give um, Amex gift, gift cards or gas gift cards for travel and reimbursement. So um, that was hugely helpful. Yes. I forgot that part. Thank you so much because we don't have a mechanism for stipends, mm -hmm. but yep. she does. Yep. So, yep. so this would not count as our first read because we're, because we're all amending it. It's at our discretion. Okay. I, I think it could. Count I think it could. First yeah. read. Yeah, I think this could. So then you get your feedback on the 31st in our at our next meeting, yep. we would be able to adopt it so that we could, you know, expedite this okay. to the best of our ability. One other thing to potentially add is, um, and I don't know if this is the right place for it, but we had talked about putting somewhere in here at least one Boston meeting. Does that belong in here? Mm -hmm. um, not in policy. Not in policy. Okay. We can make a commitment to that. And that's, I think that's what we were talking about, yeah. Millie. Um, but she was also talking about a school committee meeting. At least one mm -hmm. would be in Boston. Yeah, that's what I, sorry. Yeah. That's what yeah, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just clarifying that. All right. So we're going to count. This as the first read. Mm -hmm. We're going to get feedback from, um, our Boston families through the collective, um, and not the, I'm sorry, through the superintendent's <laughs> Metco advisory council. <laughs> And if anyone else has any feedback, they can always email the school committee because we do love to hear from people. Um, and then we'll bring it back for a second reading. 
Okay. On June 7th. On June 7th. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we're we're good with comments. Everyone was Everyone's feeling good. good. Oh, good. Great. It's great. Okay. Can we just um, link the updated if it's not auto linked in our agenda with the edits so that it can be available? The new policy. Correct. Yes. yes. Edited, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. 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 We'll link that to tonight's agenda. And then um, would you be able to send it out on your Friday email? Mm hmm. Um, just what the what the changes are, and then you know certainly if anyone has any feedback, definitely thank you give us feedback. That'd be great. Do you want me to send you a clean? Yeah. Okay. Please. Yeah. Freshen it to the top <laughs> of my email. <laughs> too. Be great. Okay. All right. So I think we're good on that. Thank you for that. And just for the public, just so everyone knows, um, we did this. This is what would typically happen in a policy subcommittee meeting, but we could not get a date that was working for everybody. And we felt it was important enough for the entire committee to work on this. So thank you to everybody for that. Um, okay, on to the school committee calendar, which I believe that Alexa sent. Yeah. Everyone? Yeah. Um it's pretty boring. <laughs> we're, um, we're following our schedule. The only thing that I would ask everyone to do, if you haven't done it already, um, I haven't gotten any feedback, um, is just to ensure that the dates work for you. If there's anything glaring, I know, who knows in May, I, I get it, I get it. Um, but you know, some of us are type A planner types and may have conflict already. So if there is anything that jumps out at you, just um, pop it our way. But hopefully this is just pretty basic stuff. And we're going to run those dates by Millie um, to find a location and a time that works. She has about 30, I think, school committees that are, are booking time with her. So her schedule fills up pretty quickly and she'll help us, you know, secure space in Boston. And we're definitely going to commit to at least one meeting in Boston. I have a question about the January meetings that we have a two week, we have a two week gap between meetings in January. And that, I mean, this year we needed three meetings in January because of it was there was budget stuff. We might have even had more because I think then you had a Concord specific mm -hmm. one as well. So just to put that on the radar, that yeah, it'll evolve once we have the town calendars. Yeah, we can from Carlisle and Concord. Then it, things can change, right? We just don't. They haven't. I'm, that sets in the summer. I think they've already approached me about a possible town meeting date. So. In the jumping fall. Jumping right in. <laughs> or in the spring. Mm -hmm. And then they work backwards from that. So. But I heard that we're having a special town meeting in the fall. I don't know anything. I haven't heard that. Maybe I'm, like, I'm, I'm talking spring. Maybe no yeah, town. She's already. <laughs> I'm not sure she had left the high school yet before she emailed me about next year. <laughs> <laughs> she's a planner. Yeah. Great. Right. So just a question about our work with Dorothy this summer, which we hope we will do. So that's not scheduled. It's not on. Dorothy is on vacation. She's on vacation till the June whole 1st. summer. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> wow, I'm yes. like, I want that job. No, no, she, she no. wouldn't worry. Um, no, no, no. I know that she's on vacation. You told us about that, but I mean, so we're gonna make a soft commitment. The school committee will. Yes, have we're also with her. waiting to um, secure an additional um, facilitator to help us with some of the work um, that we had commenced um, in. March. Right. I know. And I know that. Um, yeah. that gentleman's also on vacation. <laughs> um, so we just we just don't have anything scheduled yet because we do not have we we really want to prioritize the work um, if we can with this new facilitator who has not agreed to work with us yet. Um, right. But Dorothy. So and, yeah, and then fill in with um, Dorothy. So updates forthcoming. It's okay. just everyone in the world is on vacation. vacation right now. So, so we'll um, definitely have that's some really the only reason yeah. why we just haven't had any um, ability to connect with anyone. So. Right. But Dorothy, we, we could get an update on yes. with her for on June 7th, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So she's yes, yeah, she's out of town until June 1st. Right. And so we can, you know, like today I contacted, you know, MASC. You can contact MASC mm -hmm. before then, but certainly it would be Dorothy that would do the scheduling for us. So right. hopefully we'll have an update on June 7th. So we'll That'd put be that down. Great. Yeah. All right. And favorite topic. Now to Dr. Hunter for the COVID <laughs> update, but it's moved I down. Think Darcy and Harry have taken yeah. it. Away from me. Um, really, it is the high school we're watching. The numbers are down in the other schools this weekend, which is great to see. Last week, we had 110 cases. Um, we've had the elementary schools kind of had a turn at being a little hotter 
than the week before. Uh, but the numbers are really great coming out of the elementary schools right now. So uh, 15 cases in two days at CMS, 34 coming out of the high school. And yes, the prom is contributing. So those numbers may grow. Just so for frame of reference, we've been in the 40s, around 40 the last few weeks at the high school, and we're already at 34. So we had known that was likely to happen and heard from other districts of, of just that. So, but otherwise we're... Status quo, I keep holding this variant just diminishes away, and I'm at least excited to see some slowdown at the elementary schools. Because so. to their point, it is it is that. I mean, we're always worried on health issues, of course, still, but the rest of it's inconvenience and disruption and things we're used to. But And I don't think anyone expected a spike in the spring, so thank you again <laughs> thank to you. Yes. Um, all the nurses yeah. and to the building administrators. Yeah. Um, just as a parent, we see... A great deal of communication and it's quite evident that it's it's a lot to manage and i think no one was expecting this in may so no. more gratitude coming our way or to their way from us yeah. if you can convey it there is a desi webinar tomorrow to uh tell us what any testing options might be for the summer so we'll have more information after that okay and pool testing right now is continuing till the end of the year yeah we're going to go through the last tests. full week of school okay. so that would be the week of the sixth and then it'll weigh off okay great okay thank you for that um, all right. And at this point, we're moving on to additional public comment. So if anyone in the room would like to make a public comment, you can walk up to the microphone and state your name and address. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Maddie Fancy, and I have this two days, six months ago. So first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here, and especially Mr. Fancy, for the um, because you brought up a topic that I've actually been researching in my Oh. <laughs> actually maddie you want to take the microphone out of that and just hold it that oh, might work okay. there you go okay, okay. so uh oh okay. yeah my name is maddie Pinty. my address is 26 months ago um so first of all i'd like to thank everybody here especially mr nemecha because um the topic of bringing diversity inclusion and equity into the um curriculum at the public schools is um Something relates to what I've been researching. So as you may or may not know, eighth graders um, in the past couple months have been doing their civic action project, um, which is where we research a topic that had a, a really big impact on um, people in society and justice specifically. So I chose hate crimes and specifically how they can be combated um, through like education about diversity. And so what I found is that um, teaching students about diversity is very important by adding lessons that teach students to value diversity and other cultures, races, and religions, they will learn to respect and not hold prejudice against others. An idea I have actually explored with my teachers is for elementary school students to research a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the culture surrounding it. This will promote creativity and cultural appreciation, which are values supported by the public schools. And cultural appreciation, not appropriation, is that is <laughs> here. Um, so all in all, because what I've learned is that exposing students, just even exposing them to different um, races, religions, genders, sexual orientations is very important. And I think that building on what Mr. Mecha has brought up, building on creating um, lessons that bring diversity into classrooms where, but, and um, races, religions, genders, all that, that students might not be already exposed to is very important and can have a huge effect on them. So thank you. I know I'm not supposed to say this, but thank you very much. <laughs> it's like we have someone else coming up. Hi, I'm Sally Willis, 15 Sweet Birch Lane, Concord. Thank you so much. This meeting has been informative and well thought out, and I really appreciate that to be here. Um, I understand that in the past there have been school committee caucus for community members to be part of that. I know they probably have been taken away through the COVID, but I will uh, be really helpful for community members to have a chance to speak informally rather than just at school committee meetings. So hopefully they'll go back so that we have a chance to do that. Thank you. Um, let's see anyone on Zoom. Do we have anyone on Zoom? If you have a comment, please use the raise hand feature. 
Seeing no one. Oh, nope, we have one more. Okay, Mr. Moore, you can just unblock your screen. Oh, there we go. Well, thank you, um, Eric Moore, 45 Francis Street, Concord, Massachusetts. Um, thank you for addressing my question with respect to allowing the Metco representative to be authorized to sit in uh, executive session. Thank you for pointing to the relevant policy. And I'll just ask the school committee to consider uh, the, the 10 different clauses under the uh, uh, executive session policy, whether or not uh, one or two Metco representatives would be, would be germane would, would have things to offer in those discussions. Uh, I think I'll make a distinction to my understanding between home rule uh, with respect to being able to vote uh, in executive session versus being able to discuss and contribute in executive session. Uh, my belief is still that we benefit greatly by, by allowing uh, Metco representatives to be in executive session, even if they can't vote. Uh, I believe the issues in executive session are pretty relevant for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No one else in the room? All right. Thank you. All right. On to our action items for tonight. We have two. And the first one, if I can ask Dr. Hunter to go over that. Absolutely. So we're really excited. We've, we, I'm going to say we in a very general sense, because it's really adult and community ed and Kristen's support and created a vision of hoping to provide English classes to families of our e EL kids that need had been made known to us. And we're really excited about the execution of that vision that adult community ed has endeavored on in hopes to be able to subsidize costs for families in need. Uh, they pursued some funding. So Middlesex Savings uh, Charitable Foundation uh, accepted and approved a grant for $10,000 that is being awarded to Dalton Community Ed. So we are for that purpose specifically. So we're asking you to accept that donation tonight and then it will be available to families who are in need of funds to, to participate in the English classes. Great. Okay, does anyone have the motion up that they could see the motion yeah, to approve? Approve any discussion. Oh, thank you. I'll just yes. say, wow, that's a big number, and that's awesome. These little things all seem little, but in the aggregate, it'll be really interesting oh, yeah. to see the compound, I don't know, success of all these little initiatives all in this area. It's it's really neat, yeah. genuinely. Can I ask a question about that? Did it, Was this just a gift that landed on your lap? Because I, I believe that Middlesex... They, they have given other charitable gifts in the past. Like I think they had $2 million, like maybe yeah. five years ago that they distributed to districts. So did you ask for it was this? an application? It was an, yeah. so this was application process. Yes. And so it wasn't out of the blue, but no. much needed. So thank no. you for that. Okay, good. And they've given us other gifts in the past. Yes. Because yeah. sometimes those foundations operate as a true gift that you don't see coming to you. So no, I think that's almost the exciting news is, Jill really pursued funds yes. and Good. was awarded them. Good for her. That's great. Good. So can we have a motion to approve the grant submission? I can read it. I have it here. Um, I move that the Concord Carlisle School Committee vote to accept the donation of $10,000 from the Middlesex Savings Charitable Foundation. Second. All right. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Many thanks to That's their exciting. charitable foundation. Yes. It's very generous. <clears throat> okay, so motion passes. And our second action item is a vote to dissolve the DEI subcommittee. And I just wanted to add just two other things to that, um, you know, as part of the discussion. And we can certainly have discussion before we have the vote. Um, but part of this was to involve the entire committee, because I know that all of us wanted to participate in the committee to really give equity to all of us. Um, not everyone can attend meetings during the day. Some can attend at night. And this way, the entire committee will be involved in this process. And certainly our training um, that we did, our nine hours of training is not going to end. We will continue to do the work, but as a committee as a whole versus a smaller group. 
Um, and I'm going to re-engage. I, I have actually reached out to Paula for a few more follow-up things because I think at our last training, I, I said, you know, do we have like a packet or a takeaway or something else that we can have is just to serve as, you know, just <clears throat> things to look back at and, and reminders of some of the training that we did do or any additional things that she wants to pass our way. I'll certainly um, distribute those to the committee. So, so that was kind of uh, the intention to dissolve it, but to be absorbed by the DEI strategic steering committee. So um, any discussion, further discussion about that, Alexa? Yeah, I mean, I just think about last year when we formed the committee and Laura, I don't remember who was aggregating. I mean, almost everybody wanted to be a part of it. And I just, I think that for us is such an important piece. And, you know, we talk about these sort of soft commitments and, and I don't know, you know, for me, uh, you know, as, as I embark upon a chair role, uh, you know, I know that one of the things that Tracy and I have been talking about, and we've already asked Andrew is to ensure that he appears at a minimum quarterly um, and that we see not just Andrew, but all kinds of DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion matters on our agenda a little bit more regularly because I think um, it is important that we all have voice in this work, and especially when it is probably um, the most important, you know, one of the more important things that we're highlighting. Um, we highlighted it last year, I think in no uncertain terms, is it gonna be a cornerstone of our work again? And I just wanna make sure that everyone's voices are able to contribute. And if it makes anyone feel better or about you know, dissolving this committee, that the, the commitment I know is there by the two of us as chairs to ensure that, um, that there will be ample opportunity to discuss you know, all the matters and things that the DEI subcommittee did, but at the whole committee level. And I do, I think it's important to have all of our voices collectively involved in these topics. So I, I really appreciate your perspective, but mine is a bit different. I think we have so much work to do that we do need to have a subcommittee. And I think the community expects us to continue to do that work in the subcommittee. Um, so I feel like I'm I have a commitment that we should retain the DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion subcommittee. That's just my perspective. Okay. Do we want to just have some discussion about this from every member? Do you want to? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I see, you know, I always play, but I see, I see both. I, like, that's my, mm -hmm. I'm I always the middle, I know. I'm always the middle person. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> um, I, I see, I see, I see. I, I, I like the idea of bringing more stuff to the community, to the, I mean, we went through this, you know, even I know. in this iteration this year, we yes. talked about, do we take it to the, to the committee overall? And we said, no, that's not where it belongs at this moment. Right. I see a path forward that could be same kind of, there's still a DEI subcommittee, but it has, it meets quarterly. It doesn't meet, it doesn't have the same frequency just to make sure that, that the committee is, staying on track on their own work that is separate from the administration's work that's separate mm -hmm. from from the the in, in the building operations but just to make sure that we're staying on our track so um i know some school committees have dei subcommittees some school committees don't have um cei subcommittees um uh, so i'm just open to some more conversation about this okay um, yeah. thank you sharon I would say much like Sarah, I see the advantages of both. Um, I do have some concerns about how the work is um, communicated to the community. Um, if it's at, if this is an administrative based committee, it's not subject to open meeting laws. If am I correct in that or in our subcommittee? No, for the strategic. Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there were only two of us on there anyway. So we wouldn't be, we would never be in a quorum on the strategic steering committee. Okay. okay that, that, that's my observation. On okay. It. okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Alexa. Um, or do you feel like you're going to? No, no, no. So um, and, and my only other, my only other, my, my two other concerns are to be sort of, you know, we all agree that 
Andrew's scope of work is large and enormous and demanding and just also being mindful of his time. Um, you know, he is out in, he's in demand. He's in demand at, at town committees that are seeking his engagement. We're seeking his engagement, obviously. Um, and I, you know, to me, I feel that there is, there's so much overlap in the, the work of, you know, these different organizations and groups that we are working on with DEI that I do think that is that is another part of a softer concern of mine, just being respectful of Andrew's ability to, to, to manage it all and, and not having too many commitments to too many different committees whose work, you know, is, is, is there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of, um, it, it can be duplicative, so. Mm -hmm. Carrie? Yeah, I think I I can also see both both angles. I I don't love the idea of dissolving DEI just for what it means. Um, it's like the, you guys did really good work in there, um, but I do think that out of that work, these two um, really seem to be good um, committees have been formed um, in the the superintendent's advisory council and then in Andrew's steering committee. Um, so I. Um, yeah, I guess what I would ask is as we go into the summer and think about how we're setting goals for the next year that we're very explicit in how we measure our, our DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion work and hold ourselves accountable so that there isn't anything that falls through the cracks that we don't, that we do uphold our promise to, to really putting this at the forefront of our, our work and agenda. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want to be careful that we don't, that we're not. I mean, the school committee work doesn't end up like on Andrew's plate in the in the operations conversation, because those the two committees that are that have emerged in, in the year are not they're not school committee. Mm -hmm. They're not school committee um, committees. Right. They're 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 administrative based mm -hmm. um, committees. So I just. I don't know. I just I worry that. There's there's so much going on mm -hmm. on that on the operation stuff, right? And it's a lot of stuff that we're not. It's good for us to know about and all that. But I'm, there's a there is there's a there's an advantage to having a just a a, a check in point, even for the community, right? Yep. To to be able to say, hey, like this is a touch. This is where I can go to connect with what the school committee is working on. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I mean, and I totally conscientious of, of Andrew. I mean, the amount of time that Andrew gave to us um, over the year was, mm -hmm. was, was a lot um, and, and very much appreciated. But I wonder if there's just, as we're figuring out how, even with the strategic plan, like how, how the school committee fits in mm -hmm. to all of that, yep. like, is there a sort of a hybrid path forward for a scaled back, you know, not the monthly meetings, but just a like scaled back approach to. I think that's what we're that's endeavoring to do with the whole committee so that everyone's involved. We have our evening, our, our meetings are in the evening as opposed to the daytime. Um, it, it has, you know, I think more access for people um, to engage with us at the full committee level and they're getting the benefit of engaging with all of us. And, you know, I don't, again, I don't know when, the election for the two Metco representatives will happen, but you know, ensuring that the entirety of uh, this group is all um, a part of that discussion, I think, is important. Uh, that, and again, ensuring that we have the appropriate amount of diversity, equity, inclusion work on our school committee agendas, our large format, you know, sort of the way we did this evening the policy, I think is the antidote to that. In a, and again, it provides us with a more inclusive environment to do it that is often, I think, more convenient for the public to engage with us. Right. And I guess, you know, from my perspective, because we, we did have a lot of discussion about this, um, you know, and Alexa and I with Andrew and Lori, we did discuss, you know, why we wanted to dissolve it. And it's not because, you know, I mean, it is, this work is very important, but we want to be more collaborative with the steering committee process versus, you know, 
the school committee looking over, you know, and, and having Andrew present to the smaller group and then present to the larger group, we'd prefer that the entire group be informed and be able to participate more than just a subcommittee group. So that, I mean, and I chaired the DEI subcommittee this year, um, and it would be my recommendation as chair of that committee to roll it into the DEI strategic planning, strategic steering committee, sorry, um, because it will meet monthly. We do have, you know, we have discussion that we're going to have. It's, you know, it's looking at the actual strategic plan now and the mission statement, and it is getting into that work. And there's certainly more work to do as a committee, but I think it's going to benefit the entire committee to participate in this work. Yes, Cynthia. But I think it needs the compliment. And I think you just said exactly what I think is it needs that compliment of a DEI sub because the public does not have access to those, those meetings at all. There's no recordings, there's no public but access. But they'll have access to our school committee meetings because we're we'll doing I think that work in If public. you're working, I, I just have a different perspective yeah. and I, which and is it's fine, fine. yeah. yeah I, which is fine. Yeah. I think um, it's just about whether we want to put the work of the DEI subcommittee on our main agendas and, and uh, my my advocacy for that is absolutely yes because it involves all of us, um, and that's I, I guess that's really sort of the crux of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Yeah. Yeah. I just I don't, I don't see a reason to to, to totally close it down. I mean, I take a look. Like we still have a budget subcommittee on our website. I think it's technically like, I don't know if that ever got closed off. So like you can always it was, leave it, you can leave it open as like an option to tap into at some point, right? Like we were just, it was advised that the, that in order to, if, if we're not going to elect or appoint representatives to it, you, you dissolve it. I mean, we could, okay. I suppose Let's we can go a year and, 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 and further, I think too, you know, these things are, this is for a year. We'll revisit our goals. We'll revisit appointments. We'll revisit the organizations with which we liaise every year. And I think too, one thing that um, I want to focus more on, this is, you know, a little bit tangential to the discussion is sort of is, 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 is better self-evaluation of the committee, a little bit more robust discussion. And that would absolutely be a part of this. Oh, that didn't work. Um, or, Oh, you know, um, you know, could could we could we reinstate it? And here are the reasons why. I mean, certainly things are fluid and never off the table. But I do think it's worthwhile to to bring this to the whole committee and 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 what that means, um, just to include all of our voices. Let's just take a vote. <laughs> okay, yeah. we can certainly take a vote. Can. And I and I just will also say, you know, Lori and Andrew and Kristen also sit on that. Um, that committee with us. Mm -hmm. And so when those meetings happen during the day, then the public can't always be part of it, which our goal was to really have the public more engaged with us during a school committee meeting no, on this. Yep, so, yeah, yep. yeah. And like, you know, everyone's got limited time. Like our goal was also to alternate the meetings, right? To meet in the mornings. That was like at our first meeting. We're like, we'll meet. The EI right. subcommittee will meet in the mornings and then in the evenings, and in the mornings and the evening. And we never, we no, never, and we that, didn't that do that didn't work. No, yeah. and I think okay. part of the reason, you know, when we are dealing with employees, like we have to be cognizant yeah. of the night meetings, you know, that they're attending for sure. FinCom and other things. So, you know, that that just didn't work out this yeah. year, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Something yep. 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 So. Okay, so does anyone have the motion in front of them? We'll just take a vote. I think we can just move. Okay, let me just see if I have. Anyone want to make a motion? It's on the screen. Okay, it's oh, on. there we go. I'm just trying to pull it up. Going once, <laughs> going twice. Okay. So Sharon no one, and I can't make motions. You can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sharon and I can't make motions because if it's if it applies to the to two, both. to Comfort yep. and Carlisle, we yep. Just, yep. Okay, so I will um, entertain. I will entertain a motion that the Concord and Concord Carlisle School Committees vote to dissolve the Joint School Committees DEI subcommittee. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second just to take a vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Abstain? So that passes. Okay, thank you. With that, it has three two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And everyone will note the change in the agenda. Um, we did not have any. We only had the school committee. Uh, sorry, the building committee on our CPS agenda, and we didn't have any meetings. Court isn't here, and he did. And there was one design subcommittee meeting, but he didn't. He wasn't able to attend it. So we get to adjourn. Before you do, I just want to note we're watching carefully what's happening in Texas tonight. There's a um, death count of 18 kids now and one teacher. And we're devastated. Obviously, it happens off too often. But whenever it's the elementary schools, it just becomes completely incomprehensible. So um, the president's addressing the nation as we sit here. And I've already sent one letter out. And really, our work will be security support and just trying to figure out how it could happen again. So more to come, but I just couldn't sit here and not note it while I'm yeah, watching. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. So much go on. Thank you for that. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn the Concord Carlisle School Committee meeting. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you, all in favor? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for Thank coming. You. See you on the 7th. Seventh. Yes, June 7th. We need court as our, like,